At the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas, we have actual original artifacts that challenge evolutionary theory. One of the more intriguing of those artifacts is the London artifact, a hammer. This hammer was discovered in June 1936. At the time of this taping, that is 76 years ago. It is in rock, hard concretionary rock, that is assigned an age of 140 million years. And it's in an area that's assigned an age of 300 million years, a broad area. But there's a small area assigned an age of 140 million years. So let's just take the younger age. Now remember, those ages are simply assigned due to the artifacts that are found in them and particularly the fossils that are found in them. This hammer was discovered in June 1936 by Frank and Emma Hahn. Their son later became a professor at Ohio State University. We were able, with the help of benefactors, to purchase this some years ago. When they first discovered it on a piece of new property they had just purchased, they simply saw a rock, concretionary rock, that was embedded in the bedrock. They got it out. There was nothing but a stick sticking out. Their son chipped the top of it off. This is a portion of the overlay material. You can see the groove where it fit. Now, the overlay material covered all of it. This overlay material consists of nucleopolysipod shells which are assigned an age from Silurian to present. And again, that is of no great significance, but the hammer itself is. A portion of the handle is colified, indicating that there was pressure and compression. There's no rust on it, this is char. I took this particular artifact to Battelle Laboratory in Columbus, Ohio. We use the same laboratory, the same instrument, the same technician, to analyze this as analyze the original moonstones that were retrieved by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. In the research at the laboratory, they did a streaming microprobe elemental analysis. And they discovered that the iron, the hammerhead, is 96.6% iron, 0.74% sulfur, and 2.6% chlorine. You can't do that. You can compound chlorine with dust particles of iron, but not with a lattice of iron. Whoever fabricated this instrument had knowledge superior to our best physicist of the day. But I think one of the more intriguing facts about it is this little area that shines bright is where the son of Frank and Emma Hahn when he first removed the overlay material, took a file, seared down through it to see what it was made of. That was 76 years ago, and where he filed, it is not rusted in 76 years. I received a call from the lab at a major university, and the spokesman said, we've just watched a documentary that you released on the hammer, the London artifact. And in our opinion, it is a genuine pre-flood artifact, he said. I said, how do you know? He said, because where it was seared, if it does not rust, that means there's iron oxide, FeO, on it. He said, you see the brown char, that's iron oxide, FeO, Fe203 or Fe304, which is a dirty brown. And he said, that's because of the radicalization of ultraviolet radiation. He said, in the pre-flood atmosphere, most of that ultraviolet radiation was filtered out. And in the laboratory, we can generate straight FeO by removing most of the ultraviolet radiation and increasing the humidity slightly. And he said, the FeO forms on the surface of the iron and it remains permanently bright like silver. I think perhaps he has a point. This certainly appears to be a genuine pre-flood 
artifact. Either way, finding this artifact in rock that is assigned an age of 140 million years not only challenges evolutionary theory, not only disrupts evolutionary theory, but it devastates evolutionary theory.